Hi, I'm Earl Creech, Extension Agronomist at Utah State University. We are in Snowville, Utah today. It's right near the Utah-Idaho border, and we're going to talk about dryland wheat. Uh, this area is representative of many dryland wheat growing areas in Utah because it is very low in precip. So low, in fact, that um, it's, pretty, it's pretty marginal um, as to whether it makes sense to grow a crop here or not. And growers in these situations often find themselves with a, with a dilemma in that yields are so low that it's hard to afford fertility inputs in order to um, grow a better crop, get higher yields, and to, to maintain quality. And so as a result, over time, the yields and crop quality tend to, to slowly and steadily decline to the point that it becomes difficult for a person to stay in business. A lot of the growers in these situations have chosen to um, move into the organic markets because they, they can't afford to put synthetic inputs uh, in terms of weed control or fertility in uh, any way, and so they might as well get the higher premium. But we have been approached by um, many, many of these, many growers in this cir circumstance to help to find ways to address these low fertility issues um, in a way that makes sense on very large acreages with really uh, low yields. So today we're gonna, we're on the farm of Richard Grover. Richard is a longtime collaborator with Utah State University. And we're gonna talk about some of the projects that he has going on, um, or that he has hosted on, on his farm. The first trial that we're going to look at here in Snowville is uh, a fertility trial uh, looking at the effects of compost applied at very high rates and the effect that that has on, on subsequent wheat yield and quality. And <clears throat> so this was done with composted steer manure and the original compost application was applied back in 1994. And so what happened was, was David Hole and one of his graduate students went out they, they made the application, it was 22 tons of uh, dry weight per acre. So it was a fairly high rate of compost. And the uh, yield effects were measured from that one time compost application for a couple of years. They sat down, they ran the stats and uh, economics on the whole situation and discovered, yeah, we got triple the yield by, by applying compost but economically, it's a it it was a loser. It didn't it didn't make a whole lot of sense, and so the project was scrapped. So then we fast forward to twenty uh, two thousand seven two thousand eight. Uh, Jennifer Reeve came to USU as an organic person, and she got wind of this trial, and uh, wanted to follow up on it and see how if if there's been any long term effects of that that one application of of compost, and so. She pulled it up on on Google Earth um, to to try to figure out where the where the where the trial was, and lo and behold, it was visible from a satellite in outer space. It was still apparent even even all those years later that there was something different about those little squares where the compost was applied. They really stood out, and they wanted to go investigate further. So they came back to the original site, which is right here where we're standing, and triangulated off of some off of some power poles there's one of them back there behind me um, and we're able to to re reestablish the trial back to its original form and we and went in and measured yields and they found that all those years later from 1994 to 2008 the yields were still double from that one compost application now Ever since then, we followed this, and we're we're just getting ready to harvest the 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 2020 edition today. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. And even till even up until the present day, that 1994 application of 22 tons per acre of compost has doubled the yield every year since. And so that changes the economics of this of this whole situation. If we can do this one time and reap the rewards of it for many years to come. Maybe it maybe it makes a little more, bit more sense when we look at it on a on a larger scale instead of just that that abbreviated scale that we were doing before. So with that, 
let's go ahead and, and we'll move over and, and I'll show you what some of these treatments look like today. So here are the trials. It is the 16th of July, 2020. We're just getting ready to harvest this trial. We've cut around the, the trial with a commercial combine and now we'll go in with our small plot combine to take the yields. But let's go ahead and, and look at, at some of these individual treatments. So this treatment is 22 tons of compost per acre, uh, dry weight, that was applied back in 1994. No additional compost has been applied since, and we're just getting a, a, a residual effect from that original compost application. Take a look at the wheat, you can see the size of it. It's, it's good looking wheat for this area, really nice looking wheat for this area. You'll see that we have a, a terrific stand, the, uh, plenty of tillering, good plant population. The plants themselves look really good and it's gonna yield quite nicely. One of the things that we're seeing with compost applications, one of the benefits of compost application is in stand establishment. And if you look at the, the, the soils here and the, and the soils in most dryland wheat growing areas of Utah, the soil becomes just as hard as a rock as soon as it sees any type of moisture, uh, leading to crusting issues, emergence issues, and, and, and problems in terms of how that translates into stands. And, and with compost, you're adding some organic matter, you're breaking that crust up, and we, we do tend to get better crop emergence in the, the compost treated areas. <clears throat> another thing, another benefit that we see from compost is that it tends to, to, to hold some more moisture, um, that, that, that moisture can then become available to the crop later on in the season. And so that helps, helps us to, to get uh, better yields, especially in these moisture limited areas such as, such as this. And then finally, the last thing that that, that, that compost tends to do is, is it creates a, uh, a little bit darker tint to the soil. It makes it, it uh, darker in color that attracts the, the radiation of the, of the sun a little bit better, causes it to, to stay a little bit warmer in the fall, warm up a little bit better in the spring, and take better advantage of, of some of that, that winter moisture and, and a little bit longer season growth, I think, because of that. So we'll contrast the compost treated area with this. This is the untreated check. No compost was applied here uh, back uh, 25 years ago. Um, and you can see the, what the wheat would look like naturally without a compost amendment. So the stand here tends to be just a little bit thinner. The plants are shorter and the heads are smaller. And this is mostly gonna be the effect of of not getting quite as good emergence, um, not getting quite as, as good a growth early in the season, and then being a little bit more moisture limited later on in the year. But we'll be driving a combine through here in the next, um, probably in the next 30 minutes or so, and we'll be able to actually measure the yields. But uh, really we're looking at, um, you know, yields that are probably gonna be half maybe even a little bit more than, than, than half uh, yields here in the untreated check versus what we saw earlier uh, that it had uh, compost applied at, at 22 tons to the acre. So the key take home from this trial is that a single application of compost can, at a pretty high rate, can last for a long time in the soil. We've measured it now for 25 years from a 1994 application to present, it's likely that the effect that we're seeing is going to last for a much, much longer time. So that had never been reported before. It hadn't really been observed anywhere. And so it, it kind of surprised us, but it makes a lot of sense when you think about how dry this, this, this condition is. And the fact that we, that we made this application, we really uh, provided a shock to the system, um, a real good jump start, and kind of got things going. And now that it's now that it's 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 alive and going, uh, maybe this will keep going for, you know, for for a long, long time. But um, the 
couple of a couple of questions that, that that are raised from this though is how can we make this practical because going out on on large acreage like you can see behind me uh, 1500 2000 acre field and applying 22 tons of, of compost is going to break the bank so the question is 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 can we um, find ways to make this more economical can we go in and uh, maybe maybe cut the rate of compost and get and get some of the beneficial effects and uh, what are the and, and are there any other amendments that we can add in order to, to get a similar result and so that's going to kind of lead into the the next trial that we'll go and take a look at so we know the compost works and we know that if we if we go in with a really high rate of compost that we can we can achieve a beneficial result and and uh, that's a good thing but from the standpoint of being practical 22 tons of the acre dry weight is an awful lot of compost and pretty much doesn't is, is not going to fly in a commercial setting so we've we've set up the trial that you see behind us about five years ago if this all began and what we're looking at here is if we can cut the rate of compost um, from 22 down to 11 and then down to about five or six tons to the acre and and still receive a a, a positive result uh, our hope is that we can that we can apply a, a lower rate and and get an equal benefit to the high rate that would be great because then we can apply a quarter of the compost and and get just as much benefit out of it but that's what we're testing here the other thing that we wanted to test was if it might be possible to um, use cover crops as a as a substitute for compost uh, we all know that, that that recently there's been an awful lot of interest in cover crops um, the the these organic producers are interested in them and so we're going to test them out here to see how they affect the uh, production of, of dry land wheat in these situations so let's go take a look so these are fairly large plots for re from a research standpoint so we've got uh, 25 feet wide by about 75 feet long, 80 feet long. You can see we've taken a swath right out of the middle with our small harvester, and we still have some area over here to the side that we can take a look at and try to learn something from. So this is 22 tons to the acre compost applied one time. It was applied in 2015, so it's now, um, you know, it's now in its third uh, harvest time, and it looks very similar to what we see in those long-term plots. You've got good looking heads, you've got a good tillering, you've got a really nice stand, and the yields are gonna be nice. Um, let's go look at the lower rates now. So this is 11 tons to the acre. And the heads are just a little bit smaller the stand is just a little bit thinner. The uh, tillering is just a, a little bit less. So it's about half the rate of compost and we're seeing, um, certainly seeing less wheat growth here. Here's the five to six ton to the acre treatment. And we're seeing uh, even a thinner stand, less tillering, and smaller heads and it'll it'll certainly yield less and here is the zero the untreated check and we have a much thinner stand little to no tillering and the heads are just tiny a lot of open canopy um, a lot of yield that has been yield potential that has been left behind here so when we when we started out on in this project we were hoping that we could we could uh, drop from a high rate to um, you know half or a quarter of that amount and get a similar result but what we have found is that um, it looks like the relationship is pretty linear if you apply <clears throat> a high rate of compost you get the most yield if you apply less compost you get a lower yield and if you apply less than that you get less still and so unfortunately it seems like in order to get the, the the best yield benefit we do need to go with the high rate 
but there is still certainly a benefit to, to, to from going from this with zero to even a, a five or a six ton rate, you can boost your yield substantially.